Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. Authority. Your life is an expression of God's will, God's authority, God's revelation position. That's how a believer is supposed to live. Many people got saved, but they don't bother about what God's will is on a matter. They do what they want to do. That's, that, that's a believer that is lawless. He doesn't recognize the authority of God. And the reason why you have been given enlightenment through spiritual senses is so that you can track the will of God and line up with it. So it is something I, I say every day in my prayers. I li if I can know your will, oh God, I will line up. I choose your will. And that's why I wrote a book on choice. Because your entry into functioning under the authority of the reign of heaven is choosing the will of God to be your will or surrendering your own will and adopting God's will as your choice. It means you have decided to be a walking expression of the will of God. If someone comes to fight you, therefore, the person is no longer fighting you. The person is fighting the will of God because you surrendered your will and took on the will of God to be your will. Oh, that was how Jesus won in, in, in his death. Satan came to kill him, but he went into Gethsemane, and he said, not my will. He said, yours be done. Even though, if you ask me, I will say, let this cup pass away. However, my will is not that important. Let your own will be done. And as he prayed in that garden, it was a prayer of alignment. He was moving from his own will and moving in under God's authority, moving under God's will. And by the time the prayer finished, God's will was his will. Before the prayer started, he thought that the cup was different from the will. When the prayer ended, he knew that the cup was the will. And he rose up ready to do the will of God. Satan came late because by the time he left Gethsemane, he was a walking manifestation of the will of God. And Satan tried to kill him. But according to the will of God, he set him free. Any man that is one with God's will cannot be defeated. Never. Before you fight, find out on which side are you. Don't just go and say you want to fight in the flesh. <laughs> you will need the help of medical people. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will need their help. And we have a, a few of them here in the conference. They are willing to help. But you know what? If you are in alignment with God's will, you are one with God's will, you have entered into the, under the influence of the reign of heaven. That's the purpose of your salvation. Your salvation was designed to bring you to the point where you can find God's will and then align with it. Your life is supposed to be an expression of the will of God as you perceive it from day to day, from moment to moment, from day to day, from year to year, year in, year out. I live to serve the will of God. Apostle Paul said for me to live is Christ. Anytime I perceive that this is what Christ is prompting me to do, then that is my life. I have no other choice. And it's when you live like that, that your death becomes gain. So in your living and in your dying, you serve the will of God. And the will of God is going to take place in your life even after death. So the end of you is not death. Because you died with your faith in Jesus Christ. With your loyalty to Jesus Christ. And he who is the resurrection and the life will not leave you in the grave. I believe in Jesus. And the final thing Jesus said about salvation. In the book of John chapter 3. Is in verse number 8. So first he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom, perception. Secondly, he said, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. So when you perceive the kingdom, you choose to what? Enter. You know, I showed you a scripture from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. I showed you a guy that said, Lord, Lord. It means he was born again. 
But he did ministry not according to God's will. He did it the way he wanted. And he still achieved miracles, achieved signs, achieved wonders. But it was not according to God's will. And when Jesus saw him at the judgment seat, he said, depart from me. Because you walk iniquity. The, what was wrong with him was his walk. His walk was in lawlessness. Because even though he knew God's will, he despised it because he had something more important than God's will. And that was a pattern of his life. And the guy was born again, but he did not enter. Do you get that? Me, I, I choose to enter. In verse 8, Jesus had the best opportunity ever in all of his ministry to define what it meant to be born again. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 8. Can you give me John chapter 3, verse 8 on the screen? Instead of Jesus giving a definition of what it meant to be born again, Jesus decided to give an illustration. This is the point where I had to go to Jesus and say, hey, can, you, can you tell us why you don't like definitions? So he told me that the reason why he doesn't like definitions is because he doesn't want to lend spiritual thing to a cerebral man. That's what he told me. It was, it was Paul that loved definitions. He would tell you that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, Paul likes that. But Jesus was not heavy on definitions. He would rather give an illustration because he wants you to pass through a spiritual protocol before you stumble on what he's saying. Even though those things look plain, <laughs> the meanings are deep. <laughs> You will need a spirit to help you. Oh my God. You need a spirit. He said, The wind blow it. This is where I've been trying to come since yesterday. <laughs> I like this scripture. And this is supposed to be his definition of what it means to be born again. And by the time we go interpreting this scripture, you will find out that most believers are not on this level. This is the potential we have that he wants every believer to realize. He said the wind blow it. It's a mixture of metaphors and similes. The wind blow it where it listed and thou hear it, the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Who can help me with the meaning of this scripture? Because this scripture seems to be describing you. This is what you are supposed to be. This is who you are supposed to be. Are you there? First of all, we know that the metaphor, wind, it's descriptive of the Holy Ghost. And so that will we'll crack that puzzle. So we do not determine how the Holy Ghost moves. The Holy Ghost decides how he wants to move. Are you there? I know you want, you want him to just move now and put his hands on your legs and then let your legs vibrate. Many of you, when you pray to God, you have a preconceived notion of how the answer should come. You, you, are, you are in trouble. And because you have a preconceived notion, God will not come that way. So if your faith is in your method, you are going to miss God. The wind blow it where it listed. The Holy Ghost will do what is consistent with the will of God. That's the first thing. So you don't dictate to the Holy Ghost. You only plead with it. And when you notice where he is moving, you align yourself. <laughs> if you live that way, you will be too powerful. Someone that wants to battle with you, war with you, with demonic powers, will find you to be a difficult nut to crack. Because with you, a spirit 
is involved. Because you understand the protocol of alignment. The wind, it blow it. The wind, it blow it where it listed. The effect of the wind you will always see. The sound of the wind you will hear. Are you there? So when the Holy Ghost is moving, the way you can know him is through the effect of his move. Are you there? The knowledge of God is not cerebral. The knowledge of God is experiential. So when you walk with a spirit that is king, don't prescribe for him. Don't tell him how to come. I heard a lady praying, come like fire. You are already on the, you are, you are in the flesh. <laughs> because the wind blow it. Where it listed. The effect of the wind. The wind is so compassionate that it allows you to enjoy its effect. And that's how the Holy Ghost is. It is through your experience of him that you can know him. Please help me preach to your neighbor. The knowledge of God is experiential. You hear the sound thereof. You hear the sound. You hear the sound. I was in a fast. It was the 264th day of the fast. And I came back from work. I dropped my bag. And I entered into my room. And the moment I entered, I was trying to remove my tie because I wanted to run to the mountain. Because when I come back from work during the fast, I run to the mountain, pray first when I'm released from prayer before I come to eat. Sometimes I eat 12 midnight. Sometimes I eat 11. I did that for 264 days. On the 264th day, when I removed my tie, and I wanted to remove my shoe, the Holy Ghost, I don't know. He, he put me on detention. The details of that encounter I will not tell you today because I will need to take permission for him to talk about those things. I've seen some things that I believe is not to be spoken in public. He put his hand on my head. So I, I know the touch of the Holy Ghost. I know his touch. And the touch is almost like a physical touch. But I've read the scriptures enough to know that it was not physical. The wind will allow you to hear his sound. The wind will allow you to feel his touch so that you can experience him and he will clear your doubt. That he's a real person that you can interact with. He detained me for six, six hours. I couldn't go to the mountain to pray that day. I thought that after six hours I can escape from the room because I, I, my first desire was to escape. Then when he saw I wanted to escape, he detained me further. He released me by 3 a.m. in the morning. I came back from work by 4 p.m. He released me from that encounter by 3 a.m. in the morning. That was the day the Holy Spirit introduced the four angels that will work with me in ministry. Even though you may not believe in angels, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. For me, it doesn't change anything. Don't even say it's where I am. Because I've gone beyond the cerebral. I have touched I have touched the reality. The angel came so close to me that he allowed me to touch, touch his frame. I will never forget that all the days of my life. I was in that room. Then I thought that the Holy Ghost can only encounter a man in the room. One month later, I cleared my doubt. I was in fellowship worshiping and he came and stood by my side. 
So I knew that he was mobile. Oh, that revelation clear. Oh my God, it means I can fight. Oh, shaka poka light. Yeah. He is mobile. Meanwhile, the wizard will need to go to the shrine. The witches will need to assemble at the coven. Uh, but I move me with my own spirit. I move with him. I was born with facial palsy. It was when I went to the United Kingdom that they told me it was palsy seven. I never knew there was anything like that. And I asked him, won't you heal my face? He said, no. I will not heal your face. I want to commit revelation to you. The kind of revelation I will commit to you, you would think you are more than a human being. So I will leave that infirmity so that when you look at yourself in the mirror every morning, <laughs> it will help you. <laughs> So that's why I'm wearing these spectacles. Not because I have eye problems. Just to, I've never closed this eye since I was born. So this light will beam on it. That's why I wear the spectacle. He refused to heal it. And I understand why. So just in case a mighty miracle power of God blast breaks out here, I know this one will not be healed. <laughs> there are some things you are praying about. Can, just go closer to him. He will tell you that, oh, um, I kept that. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, go closer, go closer. <laughs> when you become one with the Holy Ghost, you become like the Holy Ghost. You become like him. You become like the wind. So pliable in his hands. You can be, you are driving to the airport, I'm running late, and then he just gives you a sign. You are not traveling today. Then you just, you just, you just, reverse. and then you begin to drive back home. Your wife will say, hey, what's happening? Say, the wind, it blows. <laughs> Very pleased. <laughs> the wind. The wind. One day he says, stand up, don't drive your car, walk out of your house, and keep going. I walk like that, I walk like that, I walk like that for one hour. I say, I'm, I'm strained. He said, keep walking. I, I walk like that, walk like that, walk like that for another 30 minutes. Then he said, look at the man by your right. Call his name. His name is Thomas. I say, Thomas, how are you doing? The guy, oh. I said, it was Jesus that revealed your name to me. That's how I led him to Christ. He said, now you can join the bus and go back home. Just to go. Have you ever allowed him lead you? Oh, you then you don't your life is not exciting. Somebody came and said they are playing Champions League. Oh, my best player is on the pitch. I stayed there to watch for 15 minutes. It was boring. It's so boring. I saw them do. I said, are these guys professionals? Are these it was it? Yeah. Oh my god. It was boring because I have my own entertainment. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. I don't need anybody to speak with me. If you lock me up in a room and travel for three days, when you come back, I will give you thanks. Because I met him. It's like the wind. You cannot predict him. And when you begin to walk with him, you'll be like him. Many times the difference between life and death was just a sign. And many people say, oh, but something spoke to me. Something spoke. May the Holy Ghost not be something to you. Yeah. Something. You have not yet learned the ways of the wind. So the third, the third level, which is the ultimate expectation of God for making you saved, is that you become a creature that is led by the Spirit of God. For the Bible says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, there are the sons of God. That is the evidence, the crowning evidence that you are born again. May your born again experience not be something that is exclusively of the heart, but let it become so evident that you are tied to the wind and the wind can lead your way.
there is a unique manifestation of God that is ordained to find expression through your vessel. A unique manifestation of God. No one else can preach your sermon. No one else can sing your song. But we believers don't allow him to lead us enough so that we realize the uniqueness he wants to manifest through our lives. Oh, you see, the rain has already started. <laughs> the wind, it blows. And I tell you, it's God's will for that wind to blow on the nation of Canada. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit grow very large give yourself to fasting give yourself to prayer now